Well, let me ask you this, actually. <laughs> yeah. Because your initial, when you started to make that like first 8,000, uh-huh. and like you had the 14,000, and like what had shifted? You had like your manager that told you, like, you're not working hard enough. What did you start doing there? Honestly, it, and it's just going to sound stupid. Um, so I dropped out of college. I was going to college to become a plastic surgeon. I totally jump around, but <laughs> going back real quick, rewind. The reason uh, why I got out is because I wanted to go to college and become a plastic surgeon. Yep. Uh, reconstructive, not tits and nose. And uh, <laughs> during summer school is when I got the car job. Because dur- while you're going to school, the Army pays you. Like, you get paid your GI Bill, right? Mm-hmm. So then the GI Bill ran out. And the GI Bill at the time was like 1900 bucks. I went from making six grand to 1900 bucks. So it was hard to keep up with my little bills and shit. And that's when I got, during the summer school, I was getting paid a little bit, like you drop it down to 800 bucks. And then I was getting the car business. But what really changed uh, when I had that conversation with him, the, what, the only difference was is that I, he told me this. He said, pretend, pretend that if you don't get a car deal, that your family is gonna die. As crazy as that sounds, as crazy as that sounds, I remember him telling me that, and that shit was like, oh my God. Like, cause for me, like, I, I haven't been in that situation where my family was gonna die, but I've been in a situation where there was like imminent danger, where people were dying, and it made me think like, dude, under no, any circumstance, like it, it doesn't matter, right? It's like fight or flight. So. Uh, I just said, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be all in. I'm going to put both feet in and uh, I'm going to give it my all. And literally, like it just turned on, like the switch turned on. And honestly, I paid this guy. His name is Dominic DeMarini. So I don't even know if he's still in the car biz <laughs> or, or around, bro. He is the like the epitome of what you think of an old school car guy. Like had red suspenders with a flower <laughs> and shit. Like his mustache was like this, you know? And um, I paid... From my uh, from that first check after that, I paid fifteen hundred bucks, I think it was, and he taught he did like like in depth sales training. Yep. Like, this is what you can do. It was the first guru. I didn't even know it was a guru, but you know it was the first my first guru in, in encounter. And I paid the money for my check. They AR'd it, so it was kind of it was cool because I didn't have to come out of pocket uh, theoretically, but they took it out later. But that honestly, the training and guidance from somebody that had already done it just completely shifted my mindset that like, hey dude, what this old guy can do it, I'm pretty sure I can do it. Yeah. And that's when it just started snowballing. So I go to this other dealership and now I'm an ASM, assistant sales manager, where I start hiring a team, building a team, and I'm like, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna get you to make 7K a month. And the dude was like, whoa, what do you mean? I've only been making like three. I'm like, it doesn't matter, forget all that shit. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. So then I just started teaching my salespeople and uh, the first month we went in there and we, beat the other teams. And then I just started building up, building up, building up. And long before I knew it, about a year and a half into the car business, almost two years, I got into finance, which is like, all right, you go from topping out at a certain amount of like, let's say 10 to 12K busting your ass, working 80 hour weeks and shit to, okay, now you can make $40,000 a month like that. So my life changed and I found out I'm having a daughter at the, the same day I found out that I was going to finance school. So, so it changed my whole perspective. And let me ask you this question. So when you got that advice first off to uh-huh. think like, yo, if you don't make this deal, you're going to like, your, your family's going to yeah. die, which by the way, I love one of my best buds, <laughs> Alejandro Alvarez. This is what we talk about when we're yeah. like, Hey, we need to get a deal. And anytime either like the seller is wasting our time or someone else is coming in bad partner, whatever the case is, we actually envision somebody stepping on the throats of our family members and us wasting it's time. It's crazy us how it changes things though. It changes everything. We yeah. raise the necessity around the behavior that we need to be implementing. Absolutely. When you started training your team and you start first, like you get headhunted, uh-huh. you start building the sales team under you, were you giving them that same advice or were you just going directly to sales training? Like, no. hey, maybe I don't need to tell them that they're about so to die. So I didn't tell them about the family dying thing because they just weren't, I don't think they were there yet. They were like green be, peas. Gotcha, so like, gotcha. um, me hearing it from him is I really respected uh, Mr. Knapp and his brother. He's a colonel in, in the army. Like to me, that's like, like it's a big deal. A, a green beret colonel, like it's not like a normal thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, with the salespeople though, I had, bro, I was doing like powwows, which has helped me huge in consulting and, and uh, real estate as well. Um, we would have buy, uh, two hourly KPI checks. Like every two wow. hours we would meet up and I would print out their calls and I would go, we would all stand just like this. And I'd be like, Hey, Marlon, you got, it looks like you did 15 calls in the last two hours, this much talk time, 
Da 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 da. How many points? You got zero appointments. What happened? Who did you talk to? What did they say? Da 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 da. Where's your? And then the next person. Hey, little Johnny, you got 20 calls. Good job. Da 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 da. Talk to two people. Set one appointment. Great job. Okay. You got three calls. What the fuck's been going on the last two hours? Right. So like the accountability that I learned in the army really helped me in the car business. Mm. And so now it's like everything was like to me was numbers. It's all numbers, right? It's all numbers. Uh, in the army, we have a saying they, that um, it, they don't care how the chicken gets fucked as long as it gets fucked. Right? <laughs> Meaning, if they tell you the end goal, they don't care how you do it as long as you do it. Yep. Now, whether you got to blow up with the uh, syntax on the side of the wall, or you have to go through a window, or you have to just you know op- go through the front door and flash that bitch, they don't care what happens as long as you toe tag and zip tie the rest, right? So that when when I was in in the uh, car business. I just kind of use that mentality. Like I know that I have to sell X amount of cars. Each salesperson has to will do this. I know this guy's good for this. I know this guy's good for this. This 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 is kind of like the average. I know what kind of revenue that's going to produce for each individual. I know what that's going to produce for me. So I just would back my way into it because then I would start looking at the KPIs. Like it takes this many calls to make an appointment, and we all know that an appointment is a a, a 50% chance of showing, and then you have a 50% chance of closing. So then I just backed my way into how I wanted to do it, right? So as I wanted to make more money, I would just hire more people. And then I would train those people better so that they would make more money and then I would make more money. Uh, long story short, I started, I topped out at about 400K a year in the car business. Uh, and while I was in finance school, I met this guy, Tony Hilger. Shouts out to you. Love you, man. Uh, he, at the end of the class in Dallas for finance school, he had a, a laminated piece of paper with a QR code on it and a bunch of letters. And it had like a little B on it, right? And he's like, this is the future. You can, it's untraceable. You're the bank. You can buy drugs. You can buy citizenship. You can buy rhino horn, gems, blood diamonds, whatever you want with it. And I'm like, wow, well, I don't know, want none of that <laughs> shit, you know? But he's like... If you're interested in investing in this and you want to talk more about this, meet me in the lobby bar at eight. At this point, I was broke. Not broke, but, you know, I was like a single family income. Just found out my daughter was going to be born and I had a scarcity mindset. I would save every dollar, man. Mm. every dollar I Been got. There. Yep. All my friends would go out and they're like, dude, you're making like 15 grand a month. Why aren't you coming out? I'm like, nah, bro, I don't need to go out. I don't need to do that. I don't need to buy that. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, absolutely. Like, broke is because I love it. Like it's you subjective. Said, make it four hundred k a year. Yeah. Like make it fifteen k a month. Like a lot of people are like, bro, that's broke. Is I'm at home trying to like scrape together pennies. And yeah. The bus. And ultimately, we start to realize broke isn't about how much money you're making. It's, not. it's a mindset. It's your mindset. If you like this episode so far that I'm doing with Shark Tino, then you can go over here to watch the entire episode in full. Or if you want to not watch another part where we kept the conversation going, you can click on this video right here.